Hey everyone, it's Daphne. We're working on Voyage Beneath the Sea and we're gonna do, right now I'm working on the back cover. And I, because I know I need these large sheets for the inside and outside covers of the album, I'm, I'm kind of skipping around and doing things a little bit out of order. I'm gonna present them to you in order, but I wanted to preserve these papers. It's something you might wanna consider uh, doing ahead of time. Um, let's see. Um, I'm also going to use the graphic 45 clock die and I'm using the decorative uh, frame for it. So, um, I'm trying to decide if I want to put a contrast strip in here or not. Okay, let me show you where I'm headed. I'm going to use this, uh, the clock, uh, decorative clock die circle. And this is again in the back. This is a sticker matted on uh, cardstock, sticker matted on cardstock. And I think I'm going to do something like this. Just sort of a, a cluster of these stickers and this clock dot. I think it's just real pretty. So the question I'm trying to answer in my mind is do I want a contrast sheet because it's just so much or do I want to just focus on this? And I think that looks best. So now knowing that, I know I don't need to cut this sheet so we can go ahead and glue and put it down. I've already inked it. sufficient clue in the corners. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it flat. Uh, I think it'll be a little bit easier to decorate. <clears throat> All right. I felt like I was gonna sneeze, but it went away. Let's get this out of our field of vision. There we go. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to add these stickers. I need to get an idea of where, and I think that's about right. So I'm going to start by adhering this, and I'm leaving everything flat since it's on the back side. And when we open the book, I want it to lay flat on the back. And again, this is a sticker. And I'm going to put it slightly off center toward the bottom. <clears throat> I don't use ribbons to tie my books closed, but a lot of people do and they like that. Uh, this is a great way to hide the back side of your ribbon if you'd like to do that. <clears throat> okay, and the, again, this is the graphic 45 clock die. <clears throat> I'm only going to glue this side down because I think I'm going to tuck this behind it, but I haven't decided. Actually, I was going to put this behind it too, so I'm going to lift part of my sticker up because I think I'm going to tuck this under. I really like this. I think it's very pretty. It's hard to get out of the die itself. It's kind of a pain, but it, it really makes uh, quite a statement when you get it down.
Okay. And I think what I want to do is tuck this under like so. And then I've got a couple of options. I've got this and or this or this. And I'm not liking that. I think this is a little too big, so let's switch it out with this one. And I think that's a little bit better. I like the scale better. With this or this. And I'm going to add a little more glue to hold this all together. I think that's what I like. Okay. I like it. There we go. There we go. So there's the back cover. I've got a couple of uh, pieces that I want to make sure get tacked down. <clears throat> One more right here. Okay, so I'm just checking around all my edges. Every every now and again, I'll see a little piece sticking up. So we'll just tack those down. Okay, and that's the back. So I think that looks nice, right? Okay, so I'm still working on the cover, but I want to show you what I've done so far. <clears throat> so this is the cover, and I really want to use this image but it's too tall for the book. So rather than just cut it down, I'm gonna show you what I did. I taped it together for the moment, but this is artist tape, so it won't tear the paper. So basically, here's what I did. Here's the top part, and here's the bottom part, and I cut this center section out. So. I fussy cut the fish out, so when I go to add this, it's going to slide right under that fish. Actually, it's not sliding, like so, and then it gives me basically what looks like the same image, but much more scaled down, okay? So I'll bring that up a little bit closer, so you can see I fussy cut around at the edge of this and around the fish, that's tape, sorry and the fish's mouth, and then I cut the bottom frame out, and it's gonna fit in just like so. You can see the fish mouth goes there. And it turns out, after I fussy cut it, really what you need to cut is the bottom lip of the fish and this fin. You don't really need to cut this out, but I wasn't sure, so I overcut. That's okay, I'm gonna, when I glue it down, you won't be able to see it. So we have this scaled down version of the cover and it's almost seamless. I'm not gonna ink the edges here because I want them to kind of dis disappear. <clears throat> so that's gonna go on the cover like so. So I'm still working on what I'm gonna put on either side of it. <clears throat> so, and how far over I want it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a little bit of a catch in my throat. So you can see it's gonna fit on there just perfectly. Okay, I'm gonna take a break, figure out what my two uh, side papers are gonna be. I'll be back and we'll finish 
Okay, sorry about that. Um, my son called and interrupted the video. Um, I went ahead and pieced this together. Um, I've got glue holding it together now, and it's sized just right um, for the cover. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over about two inches and put this down, and then I'm going to put some coordinating uh, designer paper on either side. So that is the plan. So I'm going to go ahead and use my ruler and put just a little line at about where I want it. And like I said, I'm going to come in about two inches. <clears throat> it's a little challenging because the book wants to close and I almost did this. Oh, oh, yeah, I was just making sure I'm not upside down from the back. I would have been upset if I put that in upside down. So I'm going to use some contrast strips. I am going to leave a break um, so there's a little bit of black in between. I think this is so pretty. I knew I wanted to use this on the cover. So give me a minute. I'll get these two strips trimmed out, and then we'll also decide what we're going to put on the spine. Okay, I've trimmed out two half-inch strips to go on either side. So I'm going to uh, ink and put those down, and then I'm going to use this on either side to finish off the page. Um, I'm going to glue these down before I get my measurements uh, for either side just to make sure I get it measured uh, correctly. So bear with me and we'll go ahead and finish this up. So I still need to ink and lay these down. So I'm going to double check my cuts. <clears throat> Perfect. And like I said, this is a half inch strip. Hey, sweetie, my, my dog just came to see me. All right, it is directional, so pay attention. Um, there are seashells, they should fan up. We do the other side. <clears throat> and then I think I'm going to do an orange uh, spine, but I haven't decided yet. because we'll have green on the front and back, or turquoise on the front and back, and then maybe uh, orange on the spine. We'll see.
hard to tell that's even two pieces slid together, huh? I think that turned out pretty good. And I cut the fish up here and here, and if you don't, it'll even look more seamless. Um, I can see right there where I put that cut mark. I'm looking for it, but um, looks pretty good. Okay, let's cap this because I'm going to need a minute to, to trim. I'm hoping I can... <clears throat> get both sides covered with this, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna start on this side. And I'm gonna hand mark, hand mark this. So I want it to be the same height as this orange piece, so I'm just gonna mark it side by side. Trim it to height. And as soon as I laid it down, the pencil mark disappeared. There it is. Now that it's the right height. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a little shy. <clears throat> I'm marking the top and bottom in case I didn't get this in straight. <clears throat> There we go, I think that's gonna work. Yep, let's get some ink on it and lay it down. busy. I like it more simple. Let's see. Nope, it's gonna be shy, so I need to get another strip of this. And I have it, I just, here we go. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to cut it off this sheet. I'm gonna do a rough cut, which means I'm gonna overcut and then um, go back and trim it down one more time. It's a lot easier to mark it after I've got the height in. So the next thing I'm gonna do is lay it down next to this orange band and get the height right. And then I'll come back and the last thing will be to get the width. How did we do? We are right on. Okay. And it looks like I think I'm going to take about an eighth of an inch off. <clears throat> Let's trim it right at two inches and see how that does. <clears throat> Perfect. <clears throat> 
Actually, it's, it's hard to see, but it's not straight here. So I should have marked it on both ends when I trimmed it because something's not straight. It could be that I didn't get the spine in straight. So I'm going to trim a little off and try to straighten that out. And I think it's, it's okay that there's a wider... Uh, border on the outside because that is the hinge and it tends to want to pull it from there anyway. So I'm going to cut this at an angle and see if I can't visually get that to straighten up. <clears throat> Yep, that's better. I need to hand trim just that little bit of white that I wanted to fold in the trimmer. And then ink it. Now because it's cut at an angle, it really only goes in one way. And that's right. Okay. Oops. Test one more time. Is that right? Yeah. <clears throat> I need to clean my craft mat. It's kind of gunky from glue. And then it gives us a little bit more freedom on that spine. You don't want to, if you're going to wrap, it needs to wrap completely around. You can't just come to the edge because it's just going to keep wanting to lift off. <clears throat> okay, that is done. So now the last thing is we need to pick a pattern for the spine itself. <clears throat> and I am leaning toward orange. I don't really want to use this again because that's the pattern back here. So let's try this. Let's see how that's going to look. I think that's going to look good. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. This is the um, gear page. Looks like it's gears. Okay. 
Whoops. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> Yay! I like it, I like it. What do you guys think? I think that looks pretty. I like my little cluster here. Okay, so now that is the bulk of the cover. I'm gonna take a break and we need to set aside some large pieces to cover the inside. Not sure I'm gonna do it right now, but I wanna set those papers aside so I don't accidentally cut through them and um, be forced to do color blocking. I might do color blocking anyway, but I want that to be a decision, not uh, a decision that's made for me. Okay, so I'm gonna take a break and I'll be back soon. Okay guys, um, while I was away, I went ahead and added some details to the cover. So I'm gonna go over those with you right now and I'll cover them again in the walkthrough. But I went ahead and matted and mounted this on chipboard. Um, this is one of the cut aparts. This is um, from the actual signature page uh, that this came off of. There's um, uh, these two things that you can cut apart. So I uh, matted that and it's also on chipboard. I added these two pieces of filigree. And then on the side, I added these two pieces of chipboard. So I put the circle dot up here and then this is chipboard uh, as well. And then again, I'll just show you what the back looks like. So, <clears throat> oops, it looks like I didn't get that in quite straight. Um, anyway, that's what we have for the cover. And when we get back together again, we'll be focused on doing the inside liners. Thanks everybody. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create.